Hey, you're you're listening, listening to AK's Dog, dog Training, Training Podcast. Podcast. Talking all things dogs, from sport dogs, police dogs, service dogs, to pet dogs, and all of their training journeys. Get your pups ready for AK's Dog Training Podcast with your host and favorite dog trainer, AJ. All right, let's get started. Welcome to episode one of AK's Dog Training Podcast. I'm your host, AJ, and today we're going to be talking about the puppy stage. So episode one is just going to be the puppy stage. We're going to be talking about from eight weeks all the way to four months. Eight weeks being the most crucial time. Usually that's the time when most people bring their pup home to about four months as they start to become teenagers. Whether you're you're training for a future working dog, a service dog, a canine, or just simply your beloved pet, a couch potato. Typically the foundation is pretty much the same for most dogs. I don't do anything different and I, I hope that the information that I talk about today will be helpful to you so let's get started so you might have already brought home your little cute baby love loving pup so congratulations but I know it can be a very exciting time and also very challenging so the eight week time frame when you bring your pup home is a big big game changer right whether it's eight weeks at home and the pup so typically what I do when I bring a puppy home, I will bring them home and then usually for the first day or two, they get to hang around in their crate and just decompress, right? Because it is a huge change between being in their old environment and then being taken away from mom, their litter mates, to being with, with some new person, some new stranger I've never even met, right? Because at the end of the day, you are a stranger to them. Obviously, that will change in the near future, but it's their whole world just got changed around so i typically try to let them decompress for a day or two and then once they realize hey things aren't so bad here i will start to go into their hand feeding right i know with my last dog i had an american bully he's about three years old but i didn't start to hand feed him till he was about four months old and that's because i just didn't know any better but And also, just because I I thought, oh, hey, he's not a working dog. He's just a big old couch potato. He's just a lover butt, right? So just a big, loving bundle of 65 pounds of muscle. But And then I started to do a little hand feeding with him, and I realized, wow, our bond just got stronger. He became a lot more motivated to to do things. Um, I always tell people, do not underestimate your dog, because just because it's not a working dog, per se, does not mean that your dog cannot learn and do tricks and have great obedience and do obedient routines because it can 100 percent like i said when i started to do things with him but also i was kind of annoyed with myself just because i underestimated the dog in reality all i had to do was find something that motivated him he was a very very food motivated and as soon as you brought out the food he was into it right so he would throw his butt in the air and get by your side as we started to work on our healing throw his butt backwards usually shaking something or hitting something just because of how excited he was when he would go into a down but that just shows you how excited he was and once you find your dog's motivation it's fun it's easy once they start to catch on what you're doing and what you want from them they become a lot more in tuned the bond between you and them is a lot better right so when i get them at eight weeks let them decompress for a few days as they become a lot more aware and comfortable in their environment i start to hand feed and by hand feeding i grab their meals if they eat two cups a day and usually puppies eat you know let's say puppies eat four cups in a day because that's usually a lot but puppies and pregnant females eat almost twice the amount of a regular dog if not twice or more so because their little bodies and brains are growing i will let's say i have two cups i split the one cup in half i'll take the food put it in a little bag and then make it easy make it fun right i I typically will go on one side of the room and just pop up 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 call them over and as soon as they come on over i reward them right what are you working you're working on the recall and you're going to slowly start to implement 
the name into them, right? You're slowly going to start to implement their own name, whatever it might be, and just have fun. Like I said, that's how you start to get into the spins, to the sits. I will do some sitting, spinning, downs, but only as a foundational. I'm not teaching them and really pressing on the behavior itself and the command until a little bit later on because I don't want them to get burnt out. So just a couple minutes, right? A couple minutes here in the morning when you're feeding them, a couple minutes at night, and maybe another session in between the day if you have time. So in total, maybe five, 10 minutes throughout the day, sometimes 15, but don't overdo it, especially with puppies because you don't want to not only overstimulate, but also just tire them out to the point where they do not want to do this anymore, right? You start to overtrain. Your recovery time is a lot longer. Mentally, your fatigue is a lot different, right? So you're not all there. You might be going through the motions. It's the same thing with dogs. If we start to overtrain them, especially at puppies, we're trying to set the foundation. So when you are overtraining, all of a sudden, they don't want to do that anymore. And yeah, you know, you, you can start to try something different later down the line. You might have good luck with finding different motivational tools, such as a toy, another high value reward, such as raw meat. But it may help but it may not. It may just be the same effect. They still may not be motivated to train. Why? Because they had such a negative experience with you and and as far as training goes that I just don't want to do it, right? So it'd be the same thing as humans. So try not to overdo it and just have fun with your pup, right? I know your world just changed because you just got this new bundle of joy who is probably being in a little terror, but just everyone's world is changing. So just try to have fun with them as much as you can. Moving on to crates from day one. From the first day I bring the pup home, I, I bring my dog and put him in a crate. Now, I'm not saying to go get the biggest crate that you can buy because with my first bully, he was a little bit bigger dog, but I bought whatever I could at the time. And then later on, I upgraded. Um, I know with my Malinois, he was a lot smaller dog. Typically, you try to get the smallest crate possible for the dog to sit, spin, and lie down in. Uh, dogs are den animals, so they like to curl up in a little ball for the most part. But for my crate, and it was bigger. It wasn't the biggest one that he has now, but it was bigger than what he probably should have had. So with that, I made it work, right? So I'm not telling you to go spend the most amount of money that you can, but it would be beneficial to just get a crate. That's the biggest thing. Get a crate. Like I said, we're, we're setting up the foundation because you start doing crate work from the first day they come home that's all they're going to know and with the crate work you set them up for separation anxiety and you set them up for potty training which are things that we're going to be needing to learn and train very very quickly right nobody wants their dog peeing all over the house nobody wants their dog screaming at the top of their lungs anytime they leave because if you think about it when you bring a dog home you're the stranger right and as they get comfortable with you, all they know is you. So if you're always with them and they're always with you and they never spend any time in a crate or put away, they are going to build that separation anxiety. And when they build that separation anxiety, you're going to have a hard time later down the line as they get older. You might want to do some crate work or place them in the crate. You're going to have a harder time. I know I've done it with dogs that are a year, year plus that I've trained with their clients. And it was difficult, right? It wasn't difficult because I didn't want to do it. It was difficult because now you have to find something different for the dog to be motivated because for, for at least one of the owners that they never used the crate. And when they did, the dog had a negative experience and negative thought process with the, with the crate because the only time the crate was used was, Hey, you're in trouble or Hey, I don't want you out right now because I'm mad. Right. So it was just a negative space. But in reality, your crate should be used as something that is just their quiet space, right? Something that's comforting to them because they are den animals. Whether you have kids or not, they should be able to go in their crate and just decompress. That's the one spot that they can decompress. Yes, they might have your bed, but it's crucial to be using a crate as you're setting them up down the line, okay? Second thing, food bowls. I know some people might say, oh, I have a working mountain wall. I don't use food bowls. Yeah. All right, whatever. I have two Malinois. They're both working breeds and working lines. But what I did is I, I went to the Dollar Tree. And I bought two bowls, one for her water and one for food because I'm being realistic, right? And then some days you might be running late. Typically, like I said, I would like to do as a puppy, maybe breaking down their first meal, 
do some training for their dinner, and then maybe a, a few minutes of a session in between the day. But as, if you're running late to work, you, you might not have five, 10 minutes. So you get your food and you put them in the crate, right? Let's be realistic here. Like somebody might say, oh, well, you know, it's a mountain wall. I need to work them. And 100%, I agree. They need to be worked. But you might not have the time. I know I have a hard time waking up early. I'm definitely a night owl. So yeah, if I have to wake up early and I'm trying to work the dog before I leave and I just so happen to sleep in a lot longer than I need to, well, I'm sorry, they're still going to get fed, but I'm not going to hand feed them. So I'm just being realistic. And with a lot of people, I don't expect you to go from one extreme to another, right? The whole thought process and foundation of the dog is you're trying to make them as comfortable as obedient to you, right? To your love, to your, your lifestyle. It's gonna be part of your pack. So whatever is most beneficial for you, right? My standards for what I allow my dogs to get away with might be different than yours, but I would hope that you take something away from the foundational information that we're talking about today. So another thing is toys. I always recommend that when you get a small blue or pink baby Kong, the rubber ones, whether your dog's a biting dog, a, you know, a Malinois or... German Shepherd or a little Chihuahua. I always recommend the Kongs because every dog is going to go through their teething stage, right? And it sucks, but at least they have something to bite on. And you can always put treats and raw food, peanut butter in there for them to work on, give you some time away or some quiet space and let them just munch on it. So I love to use Kongs and then I know people love to buy their plush toys and for my puppies I usually buy them one plush toy. I don't buy my dog's plush toys now because they they typically will go lasting between a few minutes to a few hours and that's about it. But my last dog, my chihuahua, she had one plush toy from when she was a puppy to maybe eight, nine years old. She carried it around all the time, right? She never ripped it. She loved to play with it, but I think that one used to have a squeaker before squeaker died but I think at least one plush toy would be good I don't do bedding just because my dogs end up ripping it but every dog is different so at least as puppies maybe get them a small little bed for them to lie on because they might not be menaces quite yet so yeah I think that is good to set up with for at least the first few weeks of bringing home a new puppy and I think it's very crucial to just you know get as much as you can done with them as possible and that would be the ending of our conversation today so i appreciate every single one of you i hope to bring in a lot more information for you as we go on this puppy journey together and any other questions you may or may not have uh, let me know you guys can reach us and by us i mean knox and zuri the belgian malinois on instagram at ak's dog training that's aks dog training as well as on tiktok at aks dogs train no ing thanks this concludes today's episode of ak's dog training podcast tune in next week for our next episode as always don't forget to train the dog in front of you <laughs>